I remember it was ninth grade year of high school and I, I'd always been a really good student. I, you know, did all my homework and I was, you know, always told that I was very bright growing up. But in ninth grade, I started failing all my literature quizzes and I didn't really know why. I was reading it just like all my friends. And for some reason, I was like, why am I failing all these? Anytime I would like sit down to read something, I always felt overwhelmed, stressed out. Um, there would be days where I would spend hours reading something and then five minutes after I finished reading it, um, I completely forgot everything that I read. And so it always felt like whenever I would have to read or do anything like that, it was just useless. When I was in second grade, I was in public school in Georgia and um, whenever like we had to read or like write anything down, I felt so overwhelmed and I felt like I couldn't do it. Anxiety levels are high and known to be high in students that have reading disabilities and they do tend to internalize that, oh, something is wrong with me, I am different, I must be stupid, I, I can't do what my neighbor is doing over here. I always thought like I was a little bit different than people. Like whenever kids were like, I, it took me so long to tell like from my right, from my left with like the L thing. And I was like, they look the same to me. And for a long time, I would write my letters like J's backwards, my D's backwards. And it took me like so long to do that. And um, I don't know, it took me a while just cause like I was kind of diagnosed like so early. It took me a while of like, oh, like that's what that really means, you know. I, you know, saw myself as dumb for many years and I still struggle with that. Like I still go back to like, man, like all my friends did so much better on this test and I studied like way more than them. I must not be that smart. And you know, that's a lie that I need to stop believing because as a dyslexic person, you know, that's not true. Captain John Miller, Tom Hanks, takes his men behind enemy lines to find Private James Ryan, whose three brothers have been killed in combat, surrounded by the brutal uh, realities of war. While searching for Ryan, each man- My mom, she knew that I was dyslexic, but she didn't like tell me. She would always just kind of be like, hey Roman, if you're gonna read that, uh, try using this and like hand me like one of these like bookmark things that would have like a little color thing on it. And so she was like helping me out without telling me like I was dyslexic. And so I was just like, yeah, okay, sure. And so I would use it. And then I also had reading glasses to try to help me focus and things like that. So she knew that I was dyslexic and would give me tools to help me in, uh, in that area of where I struggled. But um, it wasn't until I was like 12 and I was like, mom, why doesn't this help? Like, why can I not uh, understand what I'm doing. She's like, well, you're dyslexic. And I was like, oh, okay. The word um, dyslexia actually means difficulties, difficulty with words. Um, the uh, International Dyslexia Association um, has pinned a definition of dyslexia and they've defined it as a specific learning disability that's neurobiological in origin or nature. So meaning that it's attributed to the way the brain is wired or the way the brain uh, processes written language. Dyslexia I think is most commonly known as, you know, flipping letters and words when you're reading, which is true, but it's so much more than that. It um, displays itself in the way that people speak. So as a dyslexic person, sometimes I will like flip words when I'm speaking or I'll say the complete opposite of what I mean because everything's like so jumbled up in my brain. And some people are like, well, I do that too, but dyslexic people just tend to do it a lot more often. I feel like I talk so much slower than other people. Like some people I hear talk so fast. I'm like, I wish I could do that. I wish I could process what I want to say and say it super fast, but I can't. <laughs> what they're noticing is the, the areas that are not um, activated to the full effect like they are in typical readers um, are, are especially the uh, visual word form area 
where um, after we're apparently exposed to a word so many times, we have a visual graphic image of that entire word that's collected in that memory area. And so when I see that word, um, I don't even have to think about it. It's, it's automatic and I know what that word is. But that's not happening in the dyslexic brain. We know through, uh, through research and observation that um, individuals with dyslexia come in at all levels of intellectual ability. Uh, and most of the time they are average to above average in intellectual ability and often they are gifted and those gifted kids um, are often overlooked. My IQ is actually well above average, but on the dyslexic tests I scored average like all the way through. So their conclusion was she doesn't have dyslexia. And so I kind of went through all of high school with undiagnosed dyslexia and I went to college and we were like, let's, let's see how this goes. And I remember it was my, my first test in college. I was ready, I knew all of it. And out of 55 people, I was the last person in the classroom taking the test and the class period was over and I was still writing and like trying to finish the test. And when that happened, I realized that I need to get tested again. I finally got the results right before finals and I was relieved. I knew this all along and to have someone say that yes, what you've been feeling and thinking is correct like the past like five years was honestly such a relief. Whenever I was young, I would have never thought I would go to college, but um, whenever I accepted the fact that yeah, it'll take me longer to do things, but I do want to accomplish things, um, once I set my mind to it, I can do it. Probably as soon as I uh, graduated high school and went to a year of community college, I got to this point of like, I have to do it. I have to read, I have to write, I have to talk in front of people. Like there's things in life that I have to do and I can't allow this to hold me back. If I knew someone that just recently found out that they had dyslexia, I would tell them that it's gonna be okay. I would encourage them to just not give up and to persevere even though it's a lot harder for us. We can still be good students. We can still uh, get decent grades. Uh, I, I don't have the greatest grades, but we can get decent grades at least. We can do the work and we can finish the job. And um, yeah, we can, we can do whatever we set our minds to. There's no reason for dyslexia to hold you back in life any, anymore, especially in the day and age that we're living in. We're, we are so blessed to have the research and the brain imaging um, that we have collected thus far. And so we know what we need to do in order to, to remediate um, skills at the word level and to help that person become an accurate reader. I had to read a book for work, like about plants. Um, and I realized after that, like before I was like, oh, I hate reading, I'm, I hate reading. But after that, it felt really refreshing to read a book. So whenever it comes to just everyday life, random chaoticness, um, I tend to look at things a lot differently than other people do. We definitely do look at the world a little bit differently, but it's not a bad thing, you know. If I could go back to high school Vicky and give her some advice, I would say don't compare yourself to other people. Um, comparison is the thief of joy. You know, I don't know if I would be the person that I am today without my dyslexic brain. And so just knowing that you're special the way you are and to just know that God created you exactly the way you're supposed to be. Thank you.